Now, within my two years of uploading to YouTube, there's never been another YouTuber that I've been more critical of than FouseyTube. On Twitter, or X, I've made some tweets criticizing the majority of the things Fousey has done throughout the past couple of weeks. And yeah, that may be a shameless plug for my Twitter account, follow me there. But moving on, Fousey started this new lifestyle called G7, which we will talk more about later on in the video. But before we continue, I saw a fellow YouTuber get claimed by a company called Superbam on behalf of Fousey. This company is quick to claim videos that use footage of older content creators, and I've had a run-in with them before with the previous video I made about Smosh and their rise and fall, which of course is no longer on my channel. So uh, screw Superbam and thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you've been following me on X, you would see my pinned tweet stating that in 2023, I wanted to buy a house. One of the ways I was able to do that was through the Rocket Money app. Let me give you a little rundown of what Rocket Money is. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you monitor your savings, subscriptions, and much more. Now, for me, Rocket Money is really beneficial. It's super easy to set up a smart savings account. All you have to do is set up an amount of money you want deposited into your savings account and when you want it to. After that, it'll become automatic and you'll be able to withdraw your money at any time. Another feature that was great was setting up a budget through the app. If I exceeded the money in the budget that I set, Rocket Money would send me a friendly notification to let me know. And finally, for me, having access to my credit score was a big plus. Rocket Money gave me tips on ways that I was able to improve my credit score, which was very insightful. Rocket Money helped me three ways, managing my budget, save for a down payment, and helped me with insightful tips in order to raise my credit score and ultimately close on a new house. So what are you waiting for? Download Rocket Money and unlock more features with premium. Go to rocketmoney.com forward slash billsyt, or you could just click the link in the description below. Again, FouseyTube has been on the platform for over 10 years. We've seen his greatest moments and his biggest disasters. Sunny V2 uploaded a video about Fousey a few years back. And at the end of the video, he spoke about how Fousey could change for the better. But just a couple of years later, he'd find himself being called out by all of the internet for these situations that he's gotten himself into while live streaming on Twitch and Kick. But I think I'm getting a bit too far ahead of myself. So let's go back a few years to see where everything started to go wrong for him and his channel. Now, if you end up enjoying the video and you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel to keep up with the new uploads. Let's get into the video. At the age of 21 years old, Yusuf created his YouTube channel. The videos on the platform back in 2011 were kind of random, and trust me from my experience, in 2011, YouTube had a different atmosphere than what we can expect today. Back then, you could upload a video of yourself singing to the song It's Friday in an Apple store, and you could go viral off of that simple idea, which was exactly what happened with Fuzi. He started his channel with a video just introducing himself. It's YouTube, you don't know me, know me he doesn't know me she doesn't know me but trust me you will know me welcome to Fousey Tube. and shortly after that uploaded the video that i just summarized with him singing out loud in public Fousey was practically an instant hit on youtube with just a few videos that he uploaded to his channel the people that watched him enjoyed that he would do these public things and the viewers found it funny but surely he had to find a style and niche that would land him a consistent audience that was when he started to do videos about his experience in a Middle Eastern household. These videos resonated with Middle Eastern viewers who found the depiction of the parents relatable and funny. But after a couple years of doing these Middle Eastern family videos, Fuzi once again realized that he could go only so far with this type of content. This content was limiting him and had a cap for the amount of viewers that he could resonate with. So again, Yusuf found himself changing his content, this time to prank videos. This new genre took his channel to new heights, and the very first prank that he recorded and uploaded on his channel was on his parents titled Turkish Soap Opera Prank. 
This first video still catered to his original Middle Eastern audience, but also captured new eyes, garnering 3 million views, before trying his hand at yet another prank video titled Hold My Hand Prank FouseyTube Edition, which really took off getting 9 million views, and the next prank video after that generated 32 million views. Now the landscape of YouTube was ever changing, and Yusuf found himself in the right place at the right time. Channels like Prank vs Prank and Ownage Pranks were surging, with this new interest towards prank content, FouseyTube rode the wave and generated a huge following pretty quickly. In a matter of months, while making prank videos, Yusuf went from unknown to insanely popular, hitting 1 million subscribers in January of 2014. Now around this time, Fuzi would add even more to his content. Social experiments were also starting to trend, so he'd add them to the mix as well. He'd have some very questionable social experiments, like this one that's on the screen now, which is pretty bad to say the least, but prank channels in general started to become horrible, with some creators prioritizing shock value over the prank itself. So pranks started to become fake and scripted in order to get content for the channel. Even with prank channels being exposed left and right, including FouseyTube's channel being exposed in 2015. Hey, I'm Shane Barbera. I was in FouseyTube's uh, Uber prank. Um, it's fake. <laughs> didn't have an apartment, didn't have a job, so I was looking on Craigslist for work. I uh, found a Craigslist ad for like $30 to be in a video for like 30 minutes. Cool. They wanted the guy with a face and a car. So I show up, uh, at this point I didn't know it was supposed to be like real, you know? I thought I was just going to be in like a sketch or something. Um, and yeah, they're like, so yeah, we're shooting this prank. I'm like, okay, so it's not real? It's not a real prank? They're like, yeah, well it's supposed to be real. So yeah, he's gonna hop in your car and uh, yeah, and they're like, yeah, so we kind of like improvised it once. We kind of like did a run through of it and then we did it a second time. It was really fast. I was in and out in like 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I, it kind of pisses me off seeing him posting like prank videos, especially when they're like a little more, I don't know, I, I had friends posting the one where he pretends to be a homeless guy. Yeah. And um, they're like, oh my God, this is what's wrong with humanity. And post his video. I'm like, oh my God, it's so fake. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> like there's a, a guy who walks by him. And he's like, I can fucking buy you. Fuzi was still on top of the world, but his big controversy would happen during a staged fight with Rice Gum. In 2015, drama channels like Scarce and Drama Alert started to report on some of the situations that were happening online. Fuzi, in an effort to try and expose these channels, went on to stage a fight between him and Ricegum to show that drama channels report on news before there are even real sources. After this situation, his audience was on the fence on supporting his channel still. Even though his social experiments and pranks were faked, that didn't hinder Fuzi's ability to collaborate with celebrities like Kevin Hart. On Yusuf's channel, he uploaded two videos with Kevin Hart, which generated over a million views, with one out of the two videos gaining over 5 million views. He'd also star in a Tyler Perry movie, along with other YouTubers on the platform. After Fuzi exposed other creators for faking their pranks, he went on to become the most hated creator on the YouTube platform. People didn't want to work with him, and during an interview, he'd speak about how exposing all of the other creators and himself for faking their pranks allowed him to move on with his content and focus on new ideas without feeling ashamed of himself. He said figuratively it was like he was killing himself to move on from the prank videos. Because my depression loved that, uh, the bipolar side of me loved that whether I liked it or not. I got like happiness from girls hurting me that I was dating. That's just, let's put it that way, you know? And I'm not saying that that was my positioning in this, but I'm just saying I do that whether I know it or not subconsciously. So the rice gum thing was just spur of the moment, just like this one. I was just like, oh my goodness, you know what we could do and control all the drama channels, da, 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 and it turned into something much bigger than even I expected it you know, to be. But then I took that opportunity and every, all the eyes that were on me, like if I walked away from the rice gum thing, people would have forgiven and forgotten, like everything else. But then I came out with a really, really, really long video, basically saying pranks are fake, uh, social experiments are fake, I, you know, here's the blood off my hands, like, let me walk away from this. And then I also was condemning every other prankster in person on YouTube. Yeah. So I was like, it was something I wanted to do for myself and free myself of it. Like, yeah. not even, I wasn't even like confessing to you and telling you what I did. It was myself. Yeah. 
I hated it. I, I hated it. I couldn't, I couldn't like what I was doing. I couldn't love what I was doing. And I hated it. So I came out and I did that. But while I was doing that, I also addressed all the drama channel names and Philip DeFranco at the time. And it just started a war with each person. Now, what I found is, and I learned this the hard way, a war with somebody who, and I'm not dissing anybody here, but a war with somebody like who runs a drama channel is a war that can never be won. Because the more you throw at them, the more ammunition you're giving them. Yeah. So if I flip out on Twitter, boom, they got more content, more views. Right. If I say something in a video, boom, more attention to them. Whereas I don't want them talking about me, but they love when I talk about them, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, good or bad. So it was a battle that I had just accepted defeat on. But when I joined that battle, I 100% was just trying to show a positive side to YouTube and a positive side to myself. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't hold on to all the lies and the deception that I had within me and all the like the hatred that I had for myself while trying to show the world this new Yusuf who I'm now showing everybody during this journey. Yeah. So I had to literally kill myself, subconsciously, whatever, kill myself, kill what people thought about me, kill my career, kill my ego, kill everything in the process to be able to walk out of that. And that's what I can say that that whole thing was about. So After uploading the two videos with Kevin Hart, Yusuf would vanish from YouTube for around seven months, only to come back to the platform in April of 2017 with a video titled What Not To Say To Someone Who's Depressed. This was a different type of upload compared to his more charismatic and funny side. Fuzi started to switch up his content when prank channels on YouTube started to be less popular with their viewers. After this video, Fuzi went on to be a minimalist and started a movement of sleeping on other creators' couches. This was the content he was uploading in 2017, and for the most part, the community liked it. Fuzi would surge to over 10 million subscribers in June of 2017, and with that, he uploaded a video where he went out to eat with his family and showed them the accomplishment of hitting 10 million subscribers. So we just hit 10 million subscribers. And when I say we, I mean you and I, not just me. Daniela, you're a part of that too. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, mama. No, mama, we have to go. I love you. I just want to say this journey has been insane. And I don't just mean the journey I'm on now. I mean, I started YouTube on March 25th of 2011 and I've gone through a lot and you guys have been there with me through it all. I cried my eyes out at 100,000 subscribers. I remember sitting on my parents' couch crying my eyes out because of how much it meant to me because I put blood, sweat and tears into the journey. I quit so many times and I had given up on myself so many times. I had wanted to literally end my life so many times during the journey. I know that's severe, but I'm dead serious. And I pushed and I fought through adversity and fought through everything thanks to your guys' support. The beginning of this year was the hardest year of my life. I lost everything that I've built around me. I had hit rock bottom. I started hating myself. Everyone started hating me. I had quit YouTube. I stopped taking pictures with people in the street because I didn't want to look at the reflection of who I was because I hated myself. Coming back and doing this journey now <laughs> and getting the support that you guys give me has been the best thing that's not only happened to this year, but my life. And no matter how hard it gets and no matter how much you think you've fallen, I promise that you can get up and you can grind and you can get your back up from any situation. Because I wasn't supposed to come back after this last time I quit YouTube. But I came back and I fought through everything. <laughs> and now I have 10 million people to say thank you to. <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm not crying. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Shortly after this, Fuzi would do a couple interviews, and in one of the interviews, he stated how his relationship with YouTube was tarnished and how he only received around $400 for 2 million views and upload during the ad pocket. First three months of this year, I was gone. Okay. I wasn't posting, yeah. right? And I didn't know about anything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And before I came back to Dosa Fuzi, I remember a creator came up to me and they said, yo, how you feel about, you know, AdSense uh, dropping down significantly? Yeah. And in my head, I had known nothing about this. Yeah. So I said, oh, I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't think like it affected me. So I went back to Dosa Fusi. That's when I went back to Dosa Fusi. Yeah. Now, every single video on Dosa Fusi for like the first week and a half after my return, after a three month absence yeah. was getting a million views. Okay. So I was like, oh, it didn't affect me. I'm chilling. Right. And then I check how much the million views were worth just to see where the CPMs are at. Yeah. And it was like shut off. My channel was like not getting the revenue that it once was. And yeah. I was like, whoa, what is going on here? Like, this is different. It was my first, like, yeah. you know, realization to it's real. So then the next day, after getting a million views for like a week and a half, 
the video did really bad. Come to find out now, like months later now, I just found out like yesterday, that day that it started going bad, there was a bug in the system and everybody had dropped that day. Okay. But it had stayed on my channel for a while because it's gonna take a while to build back up to where it was because it got affected so badly. So my AdSense was, you know, significantly messed up there, but I never knew how messed up. And yeah. you know what? I didn't care. I didn't come back for YouTube for the money. Mm -hmm. I've always said like, I have enough money to be happy. Yeah. I came back because I needed to an outlet for myself at that time to get myself out of the rut that I was in. And mm -hmm. I said that in Dosa Fusi. And then this journey came about. I launched this journey. Again, not about the money. Didn't care for it, right? Here is what I came to find out. I didn't know how bad I was affected because I thought like everything was going back to normal. So I'm posting on Fusi Tube, And like I said, for the first 15 days, every video, a million views. Yeah. For six days in a row, the episodes got 2 million views each. Now check this out. I check my AdSense and I'm gonna be fully transparent right now. I even have pictures as evidence. I check my AdSense yeah. and sometimes the 2 million views with ridiculous watch time yeah. was paying me $457. Now that's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money. But that's not like, for 2 mil. But check it out. It's still like, I wanna, I wanna put it out there that I know that that's a lot of money. And so blessing, I'm not dissing sure. how much money that is. After this, Fuzi would take a year long break, uploading only a diss track on Rice Gum on July 16th, 2018. Now you'll understand the relevance that this date has once we speak about the event that Fuzi set up only nine days before July 15th of 2018. This event was supposed to be huge and have A-list rappers and entertainment like Drake and J. Cole. But the event ended up being a flop. 1,500 people showed up when the event was free and Drake never even had a thought to go. During the whole entire event, a bomb threat was called in and the event was subsequently shut down. Because of this, Fuzi would go on a tirade on top of a car to express his anger towards Keemstar and straight up embarrass himself in the process. I invested all my money into this event and I did it for free. My accountant said, Yusuf, where are you going to make your money? I said, that's not a problem to me. I didn't care, right? But before I even got to do the event, before I even got to tell my story, you're making a documentary on it so you can post it after the fact. So if it flops, you can have the hot news on how Fusi f***ed up and he should kill himself. Right. Or if it's a success, I become a good person. But why are you going to profit on me being a good person? The event was called Hate Dies, Love Arrives. But in the end, Fuzi was the one that was receiving a lot of hate. His reasoning for thinking Drake would even show up to the event was because he manifested it after seeing Drake at a concert. Everyone thought that Fuzi did this event just for the attention and to promote his music. The same day as the event, a diss track on Rice Gum would be leaked and a day after the event, the music video was dropped. During the Keemstar documentary video on the event, Rice Gum had this to say. Yeah. Who's he who's making this track? Oh, can I help me? Can I get on your help me? Absolutely not. I'm playing so. Really? Yeah. You know who's the like the star he was hyping up? Yeah. Rice ain't got no spirit. Got no deep layer. One goes right up. What? Yeah, that's what this is all about, apparently. This track on you. And you got Mr. Rice Gum, so everything in his life. Dude, I'm confused because I thought he was hyping up a positivity, so... That's what, like, I mean, I kept saying to everyone, right, that this is all about the music. Like, this is what he was gonna do. But why is it about me? I thought me and him were friends, bro. Do you have, what's the, what's the deal? Like, there I has never, to be some beef or something. No, not, I never talked to him in, in, like, a while. Did you tell him you were going to the event today? Dude, he texted me saying, come to the event, so... I'm just confused. After this flop of an event, Fuzi went on Adam 22s podcast and was confronted by Sam Pepper and then this happened. Could be thinking that I'm a bitch or you're a bitch, right? You're lucky I have If we go out there, I'm never gonna know how it ends. Why, Why would you not want to just have your say and everyone in the world know, yes, Fuzi Tube Because right. I'm a real man and I don't need yes men on the internet to tell me who the fuck I am, you little this bitch. This is a WWE guy. Put Thank you, bro. Down. I'm staring at you in the face this and is... telling you that you're missing what I'm saying. But if you want to talk outside face mean? to face. What's the standing up mean? What's that mean? mean? What's the getting closer mean? What's the grabbing mic? Mean, like and subscribe. I don't want to do anything bad I'm and I'm trying to get to get you. Subscribers, get emote in the chat. I'm trying to say, if you want to talk yeah. outside without him, Without him, without him, or the whoever is watching, yeah. and handle it between two real humans yeah. face to face and understand each other. That's what I'm doing now. And be, no, this makes, this makes no watching? difference. This makes no difference. After the backlash from the event, Fuzi left the internet for almost a year, but ended up back on YouTube 
in August of 2019, where he'd upload a video poking fun at his failed event. His return saw him train for a boxing match against Slim, which he lost because Fuzi just kept walking into punches. After this, he'd train again to fight Deji, but once again lost. He'd leave YouTube for almost a year again, coming back to the internet as a streamer rather than a YouTuber. Now, this is where things start to get complicated, and Fuzi hits new lows. Fuzi was always able to delete or cut out parts of his video that he didn't want his viewers to see, but with streaming, you can't really do that. This is where the problems start to lie. Because streaming is all uncut, Fuzi would find himself in pretty bad situations, like when he took advantage of a drunk woman at an airport. He'd leave his stream on for about 10 minutes and came back stating that he'd just joined the Mile High Club. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just joined the Mile High Club. And I know it doesn't count as the Mile High Club because I was in the airport, but I still joined it. I swear to God, I swear on everything I love. I swear on everything I love. I just joined the Mile High Club in the airport, in the men's bathroom. I swear to God, Walla, Walla, I had to confess. I couldn't hold it for a fucking second. I didn't go to buy her no fucking snacks. I joined the Mile High Club. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have shared that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm lying, I'm lying, by the way, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a huge joke, it's a huge joke, it's a huge joke. When his stream turned against him, he started to have a mental breakdown. I spent, I spent my whole career pretending to be a good person, what can I do to get people to like me? No matter what it was, I'm not a good person. I'm not a good person. I'm not. And I got exposed tonight. I'm not a good person. I wish I had weed right now. I wish I had weed right now just to smoke. I'm not a good person. I swear to God, I fooled all of you for thinking I'm a good person. I used to go to myself. After this, he'd upload a video onto his YouTube channel called I Messed Up. Now, let me just play the first part for you. This is the first couple of seconds. When I started this and I was on the H3 podcast, everybody met Yusuf and everybody loved Yusuf. Everybody loved the genuine, humble. All right, you, you got that. Now keep those words in mind uh, and how he said that he has to be humble and grounded. Uh, just just keep that in mind for later on. At the end of the video, he would say this. Um, I forgot what I was trying to do. Um, I had some bit planned and I, I walk, we walk off camera a bit. We're on camera, but we walk back and I give her a real hug and she thanks me. She's so grateful. I sent her, I think, $300 and the chat sent her $2,500. She was going to see her daughters and she only had, a, uh, I forgot how much, she had nothing in her cash app. So we gave her $3,000. She was so grateful, she was smiling. So I said, do you wanna walk and talk? So we walked and talked. You know, I tell her, I go through this, I go through that, I go through this, I do this, I do that, all this shit. What does my dumbass do? As if, you always need content and as if just, you know, 10,000 viewers in the airport isn't enough. That's the addiction of clout. You need more. So what do I do? I run back to the camera. I sit down and I think I even said, well, uh, I said I joined the Mile High Club. I use this woman's pain, her story, her life for my content. Now, I like how he states that he needs to get a mental health evaluation and how he stated that he said those things on stream just for clout. But after this situation, things for Fuzi just continued to fall. Instead of actually trying to better himself, he'd portray himself as a royal scumbag that treats everyone around him like they are below him. Even kicking out his assistant live on stream because she said that he was emotionally abusing her. Fair. Listen one. 
I'm actually I'm if protecting you. Don't listen you. to no, me, please then why listen. do I have to listen to you? If a woman feels like she's getting emotionally abused by me, I'm gonna call myself out, cut the line, have a good day. But why would you not want to resolve because it? Because I'm emotionally abusing you. I don't want to emotionally abuse a woman. You can go. That's manipulative. No, it's not. Yes, I, it is. God, I want to work no, things out. No, here's the out. difference. I'm here here's the difference. You. I'm not saying you can go with actually wanting you to stay. I'm saying you can go because I want you the fuck out. That's why. It's not why? manipulative. Why? I want to no, be here. No, no. I don't care what Chad's saying. I don't I've care never, anything. I've, the door is right there. You know when our flight is. Our car is here. You know when we're going home. Go have fun with Nadia. You just looked at me in the face in front I'm of my business. To can I talk? You're not letting me speak, you I've heard you enough. Your but actions you're not, speak far you're louder. Not Kitty, to Kitty, me. Kitty Correo, you just looked at me in the eyes in front of my business my and said that I'm emotionally valid. abusing you, but you said I'm emotionally abusing you. He was also promised a huge kick deal if he didn't say anything controversial or cancelable for a week, but Fuzi wasn't even able to do that. Instead, he'd run in the street, call Canadian people stupid, and act like a stuck-up princess. Fuzi has been pulling pretty big numbers on Kick after he was banned on Twitch, but the reason for these numbers are because of people watching to see what crazy stuff Fuzi gets himself into. Fuzi would call out Bruce and told Kick that he deserves a $77 million contract because he was pulling in 70,000 views. Just recently, Fuzi would be seen smacking and spitting on another horrible YouTuber named Jack Doherty. All bad as fuck. Cheers. Dude, I think this guy's fucking beta as fuck. God damn it. <laughs> beta said, hey. Yo, you're a bitch. You're a little bitch. Bro, you're a bitch. He doesn't even have his kick money yet. Yo, you're fucking. I'm beta. I'm actually 33 years old. I'm beta. Hey, yo, give me some water bottles, Sean. Give me some fucking. You're lucky yo. I made friends with your security. Hey, We're not back. Hey, now we can't box. There's a whole. Oh. 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 like a bitch. I slapped the dog it, shit out of you. you. I slapped the dog shit out of you. You punch like a bitch. I, I slapped the dog five fingers to you the face. You punch like a bitch. Wow, wow. You punch like a bitch. Sorry, my bad. Hey, I smacked the dog shit out of you. What is happening? My dick is hard. My dick is hard. Your bitch is wanting you. Your bitch is wanting you. Yeah, who the fuck does that shit? Me! And then Fuzi would swat himself in a hotel. You guys are just standing there doing nothing with your hands out? This is Miami Dade police? Yo, what are you talking about? I'm being serious. I, My life's in danger and you're sitting here staring at me. Why does nobody work hard in this world? Come on. Why am I the only You're out? You're not gonna protect me? You're on camera, you fuck! What is it? Is somebody called on him? I'm out? I'm out? He just went out? Give me his, hey, chill out and give me a story. Tell me a story. Dog, I'm live streaming. I'm the most famous guy on the internet right now. Okay, cool. So a guy man. calls my, he calls my mom yesterday okay. and says I'm going to slit your throat. He calls yeah, to, to my mom. Okay. No, my mom's throat. Okay. He calls my room today. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me again. Remember me? Mm -hmm. He posted a video. He was on live yesterday calling my mom. I have his face, everything recorded. Wait, and who is this guy? I don't you know fucking know. So how do you want us to look for him if you don't know where he is? I have his address! What is his address? I said grab my security 20 minutes ago! Uh, you guys are dumb as fuck, man. You guys are literally dumb as fuck. Oh, yeah. Hey, record this. Security! Come in here now! Outside. I can't come inside. Yo, for my protection, come in here. I can't come inside. He, me he can't come in? Y'all are fucked. I'm so These videos have all been in the course of the past couple of weeks, and it seems like Fuzi is on a downward spiral, and when the cops did come to the hotel, Fuzi started to freak out, and after a while, he was taken to a mental health clinic to be checked up on. Now the Fuzi Tube saga is ever evolving and it seems like every single day something new happens. Of course not these past couple of days because he's in, he's been like in the mental health clinic. But again, I've been pretty critical of him over the past couple of weeks. The dude acts like he's some sort of like god and everyone needs to obey him and if they don't, they get fired. There's even a video of him firing his manager or whatever they were and he said the reason why he was firing him was because he didn't wake up for Fuzi when he called him. Fuzi is a 33 year old man who acts like a teenager and also pretends like he feels bad when he's called out. 
but continues to do the same thing over and over again. It's been more entertaining to watch him ruin everything he's built up over the past couple of months because of the idiot he's become. The money and the fame went straight to his head. The clout in viewers makes him feel untouchable or important. And the sad part is, is that he knows this, but continues to act the same exact way towards his friends, towards people on stream, and to other people that he collaborates with. Other YouTubers have been super critical with Fuzi as well, but this just gets him the attention that he so desperately deserves. Fuzi's peak was in 2015, when he was generating millions of views a month, and with every single upload. He'd win an award for his channel and things were looking promising for him and the future of his channel. But his ego started to take over and we saw that uncut for the first time on July 15th. And leading up to the event, people even called Fuzi out saying that he was crazy. In Keemstar's documentary, FaZe Banks was one of the people that told Fuzi that it seems like he's having a manic episode. But anyways, how do you feel about FuziTube and do you think he's going to get even worse? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to send me another YouTuber or anybody to make a video on, the best way to do so is through my Instagram or Discord, which will both be linked in the comments below. Also, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.